This video is brought to you by trevorbauer.com, the only place that you can get official Bauer Outage merchandise. We got headbands, we got hoodies, we got shirts, and we have a lot more coming very, very soon. So go on over to trevorbauer.com today and get yourself some merch. And just a quick word, I wanted to say, if you've ever been bullied, if you've ever felt down about yourself or questioned if things are gonna get better, I've been there, okay? I've been there. And just like you're going to, I found a way to get through it. So if you ever need a confidence boost, if you ever need a pick me up, or just to feel like someone's there with you by your side, throw on the Bauer Outage B and know that I'm right there with you and you got this. Today we are breaking down Clayton Kershaw's mechanics. Now I'm not trying to critique him at all, just trying to give an example of a big leaguer that does things really well, show the styles versus the principles, how he applies them, because it's a very unique delivery, and then we're gonna break down some of your mechanics and see what we see. So let's jump into it. Here is Clayton from, I think this video was taken in 2012, something like that. Uh, so this is definitely an old video, um, but, Still a great mechanical uh, model to talk about. So, the eight principles, drift, drop, rotate, block, separate, load, spiral, and throw. Let's see what we got. So now this is one thing that we're gonna talk about and why Clayton's a good example, the drift, okay? This is a style. He is very stylistic. The hands are up, the legs up. He kind of comes down to the bottom right here and it looks like he hasn't really done a whole lot, right? But look at this drift phase. He does his drift phase right here. So he gets his center of mass in front of his back foot. And that's really all we're trying to do. Okay, now he doesn't do it on leg lift. He lifts up and comes down. Now when his foot's down, he's gonna drift forward. Okay, so some people lift up, drop down, or they don't drop down, they set their leg down, then they kind of fall they tilt forward, he doesn't do that. So the drift phase, if you look at the actual principle before he starts his downward drop, is his center of mass in front of his back foot? Yes, drift phase, check. Even though it looks different than a lot of other people, okay? Now we go into our drop phase. Let's look at, here is our center of mass, okay? Bottom, which is right here, center of mass is definitely down. Okay, so there's a distinct dropping. Even though he's sliding forward, he's still dropping into this back leg. Okay, bang. Rotation. Gets to the bottom of the drop right there. Okay, now one thing, this front hip is a little bit elevated. Now the hips get to level right here. And the rotation happens. Full foot plant is right there. Okay, look how much this hip is turned. Just look at these frames. Doot, 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 right there. Bang, hip rotation, okay? Rotation phase, great. Well, let's look at our block. Here's our angle, okay? Wow. Now, it might look like, if you watch it kind of fast, that he kind of comes through the block leg because the knee is drifting forward here, okay? But you gotta talk about the principle. At landing, here, this is the angle. There's release, this angle is steeper. So he's actually extending the leg into his front hip through release. Now, the ball's released. Now how does he decelerate energy? Now he runs through that front leg. That doesn't matter, the ball's already gone. So it might look like he kind of runs through that front knee a little bit, like it's a soft landing. It's not, all right? Block phase, fantastic. Let's look at our separation. Here's foot's down, foot's really down, somewhere in between these frames. So hip is rotated. Elbow pinched back, shoulder pinched back, this elbow pinched back. So the torso line, if we look at it from the top, torso line is going to be about like this. Plate's going to be over here. Here's the mound. His shoulders are definitely closed. His hips are definitely open. His hips are probably in uh, maybe like this position. And his shoulders are the red line. So clear separation phase here. Uh, we're going to give that a check mark. 
How's our load? Well, elbows pinched back, elbows pinched back, fantastic. This glove side is outside of the line of the torso. If this is the torso line right here, the glove is kind of pinched and over here. So the line to the plate is like this. Glove is on this side of that line, fantastic. Uh, so separate load and are great. How's our spiral? Well, look at that. So the elbows pinched back. So the elbows in that position. Uh, for a lefty, it'll be like this. Then a couple frames later, the elbow is leading. So we kind of spiral this into that. There it is. See the elbow is distinctly leading. Whereas this frame, the elbow is pinched. So you guys see what I'm talking about with the spiral. Fantastic. How's our throw phase? Well, here's our at landing. We're in this position. We get good amount of flexion there and then continue to tilt forward there throw phase fantastic so very different stylistically looks different than a lot of other pitchers you know in a couple different ways but when you look at the principles he nails all of them and 95 96 i don't remember exactly how hard he was throwing at this time obviously his career speaks for itself so that's what we're looking at with kershaw so let's take a look at some of your mechanics, some user submitted mechanics. Let me play this through so we see what we got. Okay, let's go back. Let's check this out. So, drift. Not a whole lot going on here into leg lift, but as we start coming down, there's a little bit. Now, I want to see a little bit more drift, okay? There's, here's our line, and we're sinking down, and there's really not a whole lot of forward momentum being created from the drop and we're still in this elevated hip position i think if we can get this center of mass here's our center of mass here's our foot whoops draw a better circle there there's our foot so this is basically directly over the foot here's our center of mass here's our foot we have that little bit going that should be the drift phase we should get that amount of tilt forward in the drift phase so that when we get this distinct drop, it really accelerates us forward. So we're a little bit too balanced over this back foot right here, and that creates some issues. Now, definitely a distinct drop phase. I mean, look at that drop, bang. So drop phase is great. Drift phase, non-existent, need to work on that drift. Let's look at the rotation phase. Well, the hips get to level right about there, okay? You can see the level of the hips. You can see the belt buckle facing this way into foot plant. There's a little bit of rotation. Definitely that angle on the back leg. Definitely rotating the hips. Okay. Very good from that standpoint, but it's a little bit late. It's just a little bit late because the hips don't get to level until there. Okay. Here the hips are level and you can see they're not rotating at all. Until they get level, now they start to spin and swivel, but it's just a little bit late, and I think that's because in order to stay balanced over this back foot, we have to kind of shoot the hips forward and the torso back, and that ends up in this elevated uh, front hip position. Okay, elevated front hip, torso back. Now we have to unwind that to get the hips level to right here. But that's, we're, look how far down the mound we are now. Here's our center and here's the mound. Rotation should be happening somewhere in this middle area, but it can't because the hips aren't level. So let's, let's look at our block. Rotation phase, like it's going to be there if we get that drip phase uh, figured out. So I'm not gonna give too harsh remarks on the rotation because when we get into landing, we are slightly rotated here. There is some rotation. I'd love to see us there uh, at landing with the hips, and I think we get there if we clean up the drift. So let's look at the block. We're down here. There's our angle. Look at that block. Fantastic. Block, fantastic. Drop, fantastic, okay? The drift is affecting the rotation. Let's look at our separation here. 
Well, this arm pinched back over there. Different, it's lower, okay? It's not nearly as high as someone like Kershaw. Let's go back and look really quick, okay? Kirsch does it, his arm's way up here, and then he pulls down, okay? This is a lot more of like a Darvish style look where it's kind of low and tight to the body. Okay, but here's landing. Shoulder line is definitely closed. Hips are definitely open. Separation, good. Load, elbow is definitely over there. Definitely, you can see it right here. It's pinching back that way and kind of pulling open on the front side, fantastic. Uh, elbow in this position, definitely some loading going on there. Now, I think we could have a little bit more load, a little bit more delay on the back shoulder. Um, but the loading phase is pretty good. Let's look at our spiral. Look at that. This position to the elbow leading, very good. So our spiral is good. Let's look at our throw position. Throw is, well, here's landing. We're straight up. We rotate and we throw. By the time the ball is gone, we're here. We don't get a ton more flexion forward. So this kind of looks to me like we're rotating around and there's not a whole lot of like rotation with flexion in the spine and then acceleration forward. So the throw phases could be improved a little bit. Now we do continue to rotate the shoulders around and come around the front leg. That all is good. I think there could be a little bit more um, dynamic uh, flexion of the torso, of the spine, and extension of that, um, or sorry, extension of the spine and then flexion forward. So good on the throw, could be improved a little bit. Um, overall, pretty solid. I really think that if we can get a little bit of drift through this phase, so we're not going into a single leg squat position here and getting this elevated hip and torso back like that, I think everything else down the line clears completely up. So just get a little bit of drift forward, just a little bit. All right, moving on. Let's go to the next model here. Now this the video is kind of tough to see, but we'll do what we can. Okay, that's what it looks like. So very open. I mean, the shoulders are pointing over here. The, the, the front knee is open. You can kind of see that. Um, then we get a little rotation backwards. Okay. So let's see, there's definitely some drift. We can see drift going on right here. So we'll call that good. How's our drop? Distinct drop phase. Look at that. Very nice. Yep. How's our rotation? Lower half rotation, it's pretty good. Yep, pretty good. Front foot plan is there. So if we look at the frame before, there, there, the next frame, the hips tilt and finish the rotation right there well before the arm comes through. So we're gonna give this good on the rotation even though it looks kind of odd. Uh, it looks kind of a little bit extendy on the back leg, but again, style versus principle, the hips do get rotated from what I can see in this video. Our block leg, let's go to landing, right here, here's our angle, yep. I mean, block leg is fantastic. So the lower half, it looks a little funky here, kind of starting open with the torso, open with the front leg kind of rotating back, but we hit the we hit the different principles. So this is nice. Let's check out our separation. So landing is there between these two frames. Looks like our separation is pretty good. Uh, right there, the torso is definitely open though. So if landing is happening between that, you can see that this arm is already in external rotation. Um, I would love to be a little bit more in between this frame and this frame with the torso. So look at, you can see how closed this torso line is here. Then it looks like it's kind of straight on. And then this one looks uh, definitely open. 
So I'd love to be between this frame and this frame on the torso when the lower body was between this frame and that frame on the lower half. So I think there's a slight mistiming here between the upper body and the lower body. We're probably losing a little bit of separation. Not terrible here. Uh, hard to see with the, with the quality of video in 30 frames per second. So I might be off if I had slower, slow motion video, we might be able to tell a little bit more. But I think we're a little bit, uh, we're losing a little bit there in the separation. How's our load phase? Uh, well, we can see this, uh, this elbow is definitely pinched back over here. This one is kind of dead, but then this glove arm, you can see this elbow right there goes this way and then uh, gets clear. Now, glove side, I think, could be a little bit firmer here. Um, so we're going to give the load phase a, an okay, a pass, not great. Um, and what I'm seeing there is that this arm, if it's stuck in this position as the torso rotated around, I'd say it's pretty good. But this kind of like, it moves a lot. So you can see this like, this glove arm is kind of like here and then it's like going forward uh, as, as there's the throw. Uh, so arm side, I think load is okay. Uh, elbow is elevated here. So we have this kind of inverted back elbow, but by the time our foot gets down, elbow is in this position, shoulder line is in that position. So elbow is well below the shoulder. Don't see an issue with that. Um, so load phase, give it a pass, but like, let's, let's clean up that, uh, that glove side, make sure that thing stops. You want to pull it, you're doing good there, but just make sure when you pull it, it stops. So you have a firm point to rotate around. Well, had a little bit of a mishap there as my memory card ran out of space. So we're jumping back into this. I don't remember exactly where I was, but, uh, I think we're on the spiral phase of the elbow. So here it is. Here's our elbow pinched back, like back over there. And then that elbow spirals and definitely leads. And then the throw happens. So spiral phase, fantastic on the arm action. How's our throw phase? Well, definitely vertical. You can see this bowing going on right there. Very good angle of it, very good. Forward flexion, very good. And continued rotation around this direction. Very good. So the throw phase, very good on this. Um, so overall, like pretty darn good. Uh, I think there's a little bit of timing issue going on on the uh, separation phase. A little bit delayed on the hips, maybe a little bit early on the torso, but again, kind of 30 frames a second, hard to tell for sure. But overall, pretty darn good right here. Um, I would just look into that, uh, that, that timing phase a little bit um, in the separation. All right, that's what we're working with there. Looks like we have, whoops. Looks like we have some sort of belt on here. Um, not sure exactly what that is, but let's check it out. So how's our drift? Well, definitely drifting right there. So drift phase, good. How's our drop? There's a distinct dropping phase. Look at the hips go down right there. Very good. Now, one thing that I would look at is uh, there's a lot of counter rotation going on here. Not sure that that's a bad thing yet, but something to keep your eye on um, as we move forward, see if it creates any timing issues. So here's our time to rotate. Okay, landing is right there. Uh, definitely see this leg right there. Uh, one thing though, do we see the hip actually turning? We see the leg is down. There we see the side of the hip. It looks like rotation is happening kind of after, after foot plant. Uh, there's a lot of rotation going on. So there's foot plant. There's a lot of rotation going on here. We can see the hip rotating there, but do we see the hip actually rotating before that? And to me, the answer is not really. We get close but I think we can get that hip open a little bit sooner. So I'm gonna give this a caution on the rotation. Let's check our block. Here's our angle at landing. And there's our angle right here at release. 
Okay, now it's a little bit steeper. So I think this is one of the reasons, uh, this is one of the reasons that I think we're a little bit delayed on the hip rotation because clearly this leg wants to extend. After the ball's gone, we extend through it. But if the hips haven't rotated and we land in this position, again, let's go back to our diagram. Here's the front leg, here are the hips, and here's the back leg. There's two options, plates over here, we're looking at from the top. There's only two options, either the hips, this whole segment right here shifts back this way. So that would look kind of like this. It'll shoot you backwards. Um, the hips would go from here to there because the, the force would shoot them backwards or more likely is, here's our diagram again, this knee is gonna flex forward. Okay, and that's kind of what we see through these frames. We're kind of sinking into this front hip until the back hip gets rotated. Now at the point when the back hip finishes off its rotation, now the front leg, let's look at our, let's get a better angle here. This is our angle. Now the front leg can start extending. See that? But that's a little bit late. So to me, we need to get the hip rotated a little bit earlier. And I think one of the reasons we're not getting there is because we have this counter rotation. This knee is rotated out facing back. Uh, this hip is rotated over here. Uh, you can see how far towards the camera this foot is relative to this foot. So we have this big turn of the shoulders and the hips and then we're trying to get out of it. But the back knee is kind of open already. All right, we're getting into our drop phase with this kind of vertical back shin. We don't have any angle on that back shin and we get to the bottom of the drop phase. Now we're trying to have to create this rotation from scratch. And I think that we're delayed a little bit. So block leg, uh, caution. Uh, block leg is not actually very good, uh, but I think it will be good if we get the hips open just a frame or two earlier. So I'm gonna give it a caution. Let's look at our separation. It's gonna be hard to have a ton of separation without a ton of hip rotation. And we can see here in this next frame, torso is now open, the front, this shoulder is in front of the hip. The hip is still closing off, but the front shoulder, the, the, sorry, the hip is still closing off, closing off, the back shoulder is ahead of the hip in rotation. So we actually have kind of negative separation here, um, which is not what we want. So separation is a caution, is, is, um, is not good. Uh, how's our load? Well, we can see that the elbow right here is going to take off that direction. Um, we can see that this elbow is pinched back over here. Okay. But at landing, it looks like that glove kind of stays locked into the torso. It's kind of in front of the torso, in front of the line between the torso and the plate, stays locked in there and rotates with the torso. Okay. Look at this relationship right here. As that rotates, the glove is kind of rotating with the torso. All right, now that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think it would clean up if we didn't have such a dramatic counter rotation of the shoulders right here. The problem with the glove side rotating with the torso is you're not getting any pull, stop on the glove side, and then rebound with the arm. You're getting one side kind of pulling through, which makes it really hard to spiral the elbow we get some good layback, but this arm on the back side is kind of here and it's kind of getting drugged through as opposed to the glove side stopping, then this elbow rolling and then extending. So there's some issues there. Um, the spiral is off a little bit to me. Again, that's kind of due to the glove side, I think. So I'm gonna give a caution on the spiral, on the load phase and the spiral phase. And then let's look at the throw. Well, we get a ton of flexion right here and we get that uh, continued uh, flexion forward and rotation around the front leg. So the throw phase is fine for me. The segments here all work very well, I think. I think there's a lot of individual, like the individual parts work well. I just think we're having a tough time connecting them up in the perfect sequence to get what we want out of this. And I think for me, it all starts with this big moment right here. Glove is down and back, leg is 
very extended towards the camera. Hips are rotated this way, which is taking us away from the position we ultimately want to get to. All right, if we look at it from the top, you know, here's our, our hip line is like this. Here's our back leg and our front leg is over here. The position we want to get to is like this at landing where our, our front leg would be here and our back leg would be there. So taking ourselves out, out of neutral, that's neutral. Right now we're taking this hip this way and we have this hip line going, but we're trying to get to this hip line at landing. It doesn't make any sense to take ourselves in, uh, in this direction to take ourselves away from neutral. All right, same thing on the, and again, this is looking from the top down, this diagram. All right, same thing on the upper body. If we look at the upper body here, we're taking this shoulder down uh, and around. So the upper body is kind of in this position and the glove is over here. We're trying to get the upper body to stay in this position, all right? A lot of times people think that in order to keep the upper body closed, I'm gonna close it off a lot more. The only problem is you have to end up in about this position at landing. That's about, you just don't have, if you're gonna get any hip rotation at all, you're gonna to have to end up in about that position. So if you go more than that to start, then in order to get to that position, you're already having to open up and that's just gonna force you to fly by and continue opening up. It's counterintuitive, but the best way to get there is to almost start a little bit more open on the torso, open on the hips. So if the hips, let's say you start here on the hips and we'll do torso in yellow and you start here. If you close the hips off and you close the torso off, now both of these are gonna have to be opening up uh, into landing and the torso is just gonna fly by uh, and the hips are have too far to go. They're here, they have to get to there. That's too far to go in the time that you have before your front foot hits. So you're gonna end up with a torso that's open and hips that are too closed. Counterintuitively, if you start with hips that are, uh, let's, say, let's say start with hips that are here and a torso that is also here, as the hips start to rotate, the torso is actually going to fight that rotation and close off a little bit more. And then you end up in that position that you want where you get the shoulder hip separation. So it's hard to diagram it out uh, on here. Hopefully you understood what I was talking about, but my recommendation here would be, let's keep the torso more in this position instead of leaning back and driving this arm over here, we're rolling the torso and we got to come out of that, which is going to cause us to open up and lack separation. Keep a little bit more neutral, upright posture. This glove, instead of sticking it behind you, at least take it straight to the camera. Uh, this glove is down over here. At least take it kind of 30 degrees or so out. If this is here, you want to go 30 degrees this angle, at least take the glove on that 30 degree or 45 degree mark towards the plate. Try to keep that torso a little bit upright and a little bit more open at the beginning. That way when your hips fire, your torso is going to fight that and then you end up in this position that you want to be. So that's what I'm seeing here. Um, hopefully that helps. If you guys learned something, let me know in the comments below if you want me to cover some other uh, component of the mechanics, but just always go back to your eight principles. Drift, drop, rotate, block on the lower half. Separate, load, spiral, throw, on the upper half and you'll be good. So that's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, go over to trevorbauer.com, get yourself some merch, and I'll see y'all in the next video.